Hola, welcome to my channel Clear Vision. My name's Simon and all the videos you'll find on this channel are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. This week's video crosses over with unmet needs and it's about seeking validation from external sources, how, why, and how to move into self-validation. So we're gonna address giving yourself permission for self-validation and how to actually do self-validation bit by bit, get yourself used to doing it and move yourself into a better space. But before we get into that, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel. Leave any comments in the comments section below. And if you want to have a have a browse through all the playlists, etc., etc., that are on the channel, please be my guest. And also keep your eyes open. In the next two to three weeks, I'll be releasing a six-part series on shadow work, how to do it, why it's good to do it. And not only am I going to explore shadow work from the Jungian perspective, because it's a Jungian concept, I'm also going to come to it from a psychodynamic perspective and also a gestalt and build you an entire workshop with tons of exercises and insights and psychological concepts philosophy chuck a bit of mythology in there if you're interested in shadow work so keep your eyes peeled on with the topic of the day seeking validation from external sources why do we do this well first of all we do it because we're sociable creatures actually we need that feedback from the environment we we exist in interpersonal relationships we like units, family units, as I said, relationships. So we, and it's, apart from the fact it's really, really nice to get external validation. So we tend to seek it out because we want those around us to appreciate value, um, realize our worth and see us for who we are. This is all healthy stuff. In and of itself, it's perfectly healthy. Now, many of us can seek external validation beyond into the realms of unhealthy. What does this mean? Well, this this is where it blurs over into unmet needs. So we were not validated back then and there when we were children, our parents didn't validate us. Maybe our peers didn't validate us. In a lot of situations, once the devaluing process starts, as we begin to feel devalued and our self-worth begins to lower and our self-esteem begins to lower, generally the environment tends to react the same way and feed into that therefore compounding the issue so this is where it crosses over into unmet needs so if you were never validated as a child chances are as an adult you will seek validation from external sources that will be from romantic partners work relationships friendships etc etc and your entire, uh, Rogers would term it, your entire locus of evaluation is external. The only way you feel worth and the only way you feel value in yourself is when other people give it to you. This is where it's unhealthy, when it's 100% sitting over there or, you know, in those, in those kind of top tiers, uh, percentiles, you know, it's heavily based on other people's opinions. So what does invalidation look like or lack of validation look like in childhood? Well, it can be neglect. It can be derogatory comments. It can be putting, literally being put down. Negative toxic comments. You're not good enough. This isn't good enough. Uh, why can't you be more like your sibling? Why can't you be more like your cousin? I never wanted you as a child. Um, it can be abusive. Uh, well, that is abusive, but it can it can go into the realms of like your direct physical sexual abuse, etc., etc. So you 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 lack validation. You are not worthy of love. Okay, you're not somebody worth respecting. That's the message that comes across in childhood. The second problem that a lot of us face in childhood is lack of permission to self-validate. So we're going off on a slightly different angle here which is where as an adult, we find it difficult to self-validate. What do I mean? Well, we're often taught to play yourself down. Don't have big ideas. Don't have big aspirations. Don't boast. Don't be arrogant. Don't have an ego. Um, these are all things to keep you down, push you down. We can often find as we move through the world, you know, other people don't necessarily want what's best for us. Other people don't like to see us succeed. That's their issue. But we take often we can take it on, especially if we have this experience of being put down all the time. You know, don't think big. Don't dream big. Um, don't think you're bigger than you are. Don't think you're clever. Don't think you're talented. All of this stuff. So 
a lot of us lack the permission to give ourselves self-validation. Right, let's move into, now let's move into adulthood. So as an adult, we, we, so many of us are going to have two problems, or one of two problems, or if not both, which is the inability to give ourselves permission to self-validate, or the inability and or the inability to actually self-validate. Um, so what we do is we seek this, as I've said, we seek the validation from external sources. The problem with seeking validation from external sources is that validation can be taken away. So if it's a work relationship, if it's a friendship, if it's a romantic relationship, the moment they leave, the validation goes with them. And often it, we take that as a rejection, which it probably is. So we're constantly seeking this out. And the problem with seeking out validation externally, another problem with it is it's never good enough. It's never going to fill the void from back then and there because it isn't the people from back then and there who are doing it. Now, if you're alive as an adult and your parents are still alive and they are still berating you, you're not good enough at this. Oh, why haven't you got a better job? Why haven't you got more money? Who on earth gave you that good job? Why did they think you were talented? You're a terrible parent. Your kids are awful. Um, you're doing everything wrong that compounds the issue. So it's complete devaluation again We continue this now breaking away from the family unit is a whole other subject and I've done a few videos on this If you want to check them out um, On toxic parents toxic families, etc, etc. So breaking away from that can be quite difficult because it compounds the issue So it keeps us pushed down Okay, then along comes another problem when we, when it comes to self-validating or seeking validation as an adult. Often to get the validation, we take on behaviors such as people pleasing, being all giving, not having boundaries, allowing people to walk all over us, allowing people to transgress our almost non-existent boundaries, even though when they transgress, we kind of don't like it, but we didn't set the boundary. And what happens with these behaviors is when you stop these behaviors when you stop people pleasing when you stop doing things for people often they turn around and push you away they're kind of like what's your problem why why won't you do this for me you're all, you always have done what's the problem and the validation is taken away so we continue the people pleasing behavior we continue giving ourselves over we continue allowing transgressions to take place in order to keep getting that validation you could see that as love that affirmation that it's okay that you're even in this world that you exist that's the message that we are seeking first of all the first thing that we have to do in order uh, to self-validate is give ourselves permission to self-validate this means dispelling a lot of the myths unlearning a lot of the messages that we've been taught it is okay to acknowledge your achievements it is actually okay to acknowledge your skills um, and your talents and acknowledge the fact that you are uh, and this is not some kind of like you know hippie toxic positivity stuff this is actually acknowledging that you're worth being here and you can allow yourself to look in the mirror and reflect on your life and where you're going and the achievements you've made no matter how small no matter how big doesn't matter that you've stepped into the world and done this now there is a bit of a problem here for a lot of people if the lack of validation is quite extreme this is going to be quite difficult to do how do we start this process of learning to give ourselves permission to self-validate and how do we actually self-validate as i said the first way is to actually have enough compassion for yourself, find that compassion for yourself, and literally tell yourself, you know, it's okay to acknowledge my achievements. It's okay to stand up and be recognized. Uh, I know that's kind of external again, but stand up and recognize yourself. That it's not boasting, it's not arrogance. So in this way, you're kind of challenging the things you've been taught. You're challenging also social norms as well. So you reaffirm that it's okay to treat yourself with kindness, and it's okay to treat yourself with compassion, and it's okay to acknowledge your achievements. Challenge the things you've been told when you were younger, challenge the social norms. Then there's also catching your harmful self-talk. When you start devaluing yourself, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of 
uh, doubt, self-doubt, nervousness. It's what keeps us on the ball, really. It's what keeps us like trying to be better, trying to up our game, trying to improve ourselves. So when you start berating yourself, when you start putting yourself down, challenge that. Catch it in the air, if you like. Catch it as it comes forward into your conscious awareness. Catch it. What is this doing? Is this serving me? Is this even true? Does this have any basis in reality? Chances are it probably doesn't. It's old messages from the past which you've interjected into internal dialogue. Get rid of it, catch it, stop it in its tracks. Move forward, move past it, and kind of go through those steps again to yourself. It's okay to do that. And another way to do this, another way to increase this process and move this forward is a real simplistic but basic one, which is uh, gratitude. And by practicing gratitude, what do I mean? Well, you can move past the, there's obviously, you're still here. You have food in your belly, maybe. You have a roof over your head. You have warmth, you have people around you who care some of them do some of them don't they've got their own motives and own agendas for why you're in their life but pay gratitude but if however you don't have a roof over your head you don't have warmth you don't have food then you need to drop back into maslow's hierarchy of needs this is very important here look through the layers i'll do another video on this but basically if you're cold hungry wet don't have shelter positive self-affirmation self-validation is going to be quite difficult to do not impossible there's plenty of people written books plenty of people prove this wrong in history take a look at someone like maybe Viktor Frankl you can do this um, against all the odds but you have to you have to get realistic with your situation so if your situation is really dire you manage to survive another day you manage to maybe get some food in your belly you manage to maybe organize some shelter you manage to push your life forward it might not be exactly where you want it but you're taking steps it's like you're stumbling forward if you like to quote jordan peterson you're stumbling forward moving towards the goals that you want to achieve now within the gratitude as well if your circumstances are moderately okay and you have home family shelter warmth etc etc this gratification could be, you know, I did something good at work today. You know, it, I was praised. It was acknowledged. I looked at what I did. I wasn't praised, but I didn't need the praise because actually I knew I did a good job. I did this. I had a good connection with, I don't know, I, I had a good time with my kids. I had a good time with my dog, uh, my animals, whatever. Someone in the street helped me. I helped someone in the street. They thanked me. All of these things work towards your gratitude practice. It's, and it will help the initial things I talked about where giving yourself permission to self-validate. Giving, it's giving yourself permission to have compassion and love for yourself, basically, in essence. We call it self-validation. But that's, it, all these things kind of overlap. This is, about, um, this is about loving yourself and allowing yourself to love yourself and acknowledging who you are. And maybe for a lot of us, it's about reparenting ourselves, being the parent that we never had, giving that validation that we never had when we were younger. We're always searching it out, remember? Some more things that we can do to move ourselves forward in the self-validation process and get ourselves used to doing this. And again, I'm gonna go over the fact that this is really important stuff to do because if you could do it for yourself, when the external gets taken away, it doesn't knock you off center, it doesn't crash down your world. That's the point of doing this stuff. And everybody is entitled to do this stuff. Everybody should do this stuff because you are worthy of being here. Even some of the most dysfunctional, perhaps nasty of us, etc., etc. You know, this can be done. You can change things you can change the way you are the way you act you can change your life for the better um, it can be hard work I'm not gonna lie to you but it can be done so another way is journaling write down your thoughts your processes your behaviors acknowledge your achievements this is ultimately important actually out of all of this if you take one thing acknowledge your achievements acknowledge your small goals acknowledge your big goals acknowledge your progress through the world this is something that's been forgotten in the western world you know small wins i don't know you 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 
you're working on losing weight, you're working on um, some goal in sport, you're working towards something in your work, you're setting up your own business and you had your first client, second client, 10th client, whatever it might be, find, find it and celebrate it, acknowledge it. This is, this is unbelievably powerful stuff to do. And one thing, another thing you could try is something I used to do with students, which is to give yourself positive affirmations. Write down five things that you like about yourself. Write down three things if you can't find five. If I told you to write down 10 negative things, chances are 90% of people would do that in a flash. Asking someone to write down three or five things is a lot more difficult, it takes a bit more time. Do it, write it down. Right, look back in, again, look back in the past, look at who you are, look at the things you have. If you have compassion, generosity, kindness, the ability to operate under pressure, initiative, instinct, intuition, uh, creativity, even if it, you're not a famous artist, your name's not in lights, it doesn't matter. If you have it, you have it, acknowledge it. Set yourself small goals, and then leading on from that, celebrate your wins. Definitely ritualize it, you know? If you, uh, if you achieve something that you set out to do, you know, give yourself a treat. Acknowledge it, do a ritual, stand outside and talk to the moon or the universe or whatever you need to do, write a letter. Okay, you know, I actually managed to do this. I did this, this was really cool. This was a great thing I did. Um, it's not about overblowing it. It's not about overemphasizing it. It's about stepping forward and learning that this stuff is okay to do. And this stuff is actually healthy to do. It's not gonna turn you into a narcissist um, or anything like that. This is about looking at those aspects of yourself which you can build on, which validate you as a human being, which which give you that worth. It's giving it to yourself. You can also do mindfulness and meditation. These are also very, pract uh, very practical and powerful things that you can do. And again, there's a ton of videos on YouTube for this. Meditation is great. Mindfulness is great. Being in the moment, washing the dishes to wash the dishes. All of your time is all of your time. It's not, oh, I need to get this done to do this, to do this, to do this, and then I get my time. Be mindfulness, be, be mindful, be present. Put your soul into everything you do because you're doing it for a reason. There's a passion there, most likely. And if there isn't, find one. Or if there is a, if it's a means to an end, then the passion is the end, not the means, you know. But accept that the means is part of that passion. It's something you have to do, so embrace it. Use the meditation as well. You know, maybe don't expect to sit on rainbows and fly away on winged horses, but meditation's about practice. Meditation's about centering, becoming decentered, practicing getting back to center. That's actually what it's about. This is, it's actually about recovery. Okay, it's the same with yoga. It's about controlling your breath. It's about recovery. It's about controlling your system. Reg well, controls maybe the wrong word. It's about regulating your system. So these are great things to do too. And the last two things I would say are seek constructive feedback. Don't go to people you know are going to put you down. If the if it comes back as completely negative, dismiss it. It's not helpful. It's not going to move you forward. If it comes back as, you know what, actually, yeah, you asked me for some feedback. I think what this, what you did was cool. Um, this needs a bit of work on it. Um, I don't know what happened here, you know, whatever you did. Uh, but obviously, you, you know, that's where you're at. Uh, but this was also good. So look for those people who can give you that kind of constructive feedback, not just negativity, negativity and put you down. If people are playing the put you down game, they're doing it to make themselves feel better. Dismiss it, get rid of it, put it at arm's length, brush it off, let it bounce off you. And the last one is educate yourself, which is a really powerful tool. You know, uh, I'm gonna go along with, you know, learn to write, learn to communicate, learn to articulate. Definitely a very, very powerful things to do. And education, good education. And I don't mean going to university and all stuff like that. You can do that if you want, it's great. Learn to critically think. Educate yourself on different viewpoints, on different subjects, whatever the subject may be. And it's especially when it comes to the self, psychotherapy and all of this stuff. You know, educate yourself in it. What are the principles? Where's it moving? What does neuro, how does neurobiology work? How do certain things affect my, my neurobiology? How does my past affect me now? These are all things you're gonna learn and educate yourself with, which are just gonna make you powerful. And they're gonna prevent you from being knocked off center, having a psychological collapse every time the external validation is taken away. It helps center you more. And this is not about, we still need external validation. 
So this is not about getting rid of it. This is about accompanying it with our own internal validation, our own level of self-worth, our own ability to see ourselves for who we are. And on a passing note or finishing note on that, Kierkegaard said, Soren Kierkegaard, existential philosopher said, it was the debate on the self. And he was on about this, I'll have to paraphrase because it's a complex statement, but basically the ability to view yourself from outside of yourself means that you have a self. And if you can do that, if you can step outside of yourself and view yourself and acknowledge the truth, acknowledge what you see, the good and the bad, the things that need improving, the things that are already good, the things that you can already do. If you have the ability to do that and you can practice that ability, hone it, make it stronger, the world's yours. It really is. Um, and remember also, I'm gonna go with Hume here. Um, I don't know why I'm philosophical today, but the self is fluid. It changes from moment to moment. It's constantly evolving. You are not the same person you were yesterday. You are not the same person you were moments ago. I'm not the same person I was before I started recording this video. It's fluid. It's moment to moment, ever changing. Every interaction, everything we touch, everything we experience, everything that our senses come into contact with changes us from moment to moment. So seriously, these things I've outlined here, will move you forward will begin to evolve the self i hope that helps please uh as i said before like and subscribe please check out the other videos please uh in, in a couple of two to three weeks check out the uh, shadow work podcasts and videos and until i see you next time please take very good care of yourselves adios